The first one you direct is Reservoir Dogs mm -hmm. in 1992, and you announce your arrival on the scene mm -hmm. with this particular moment. <laughs> That's Mr. Blonde torturing a cop. Yes, you How cut it just before it got good. <laughs> <laughs> or, or would have closed this studio down. How did you come up with this idea of highly stylized violence? Hmm. You know, there's all kinds of scenes that I respond to in movies. I respond to music sequences. Uh, I respond to big comedy sequences. It was like uh, they galvanized the, the entire theater. Everybody uh, woke up. Everybody got connected, and you know, and I would go see a a, a film that had a, a, a sequence like that. I would see it two or three times at the theaters just to see that sequence, and then just to have that experience uh, uh, with an audience. So, um, you know, again, we're talking about you know, uh, you know, you're calling it violence. I, you know, it it is violence. It's also action. I think it's also kind of what movies do in a way that's. Uh, um, that's particular to them as opposed to uh, theater or literature is you know the filming of kinetic violence that uh, that uh, you know that can usually usually that can have different reasons for the impact but it can oftentimes give a cathartic release for an audience two years later you make pulp fiction and there we see something else that makes you unique which is dialogue you won't find any place else. <laughs> yeah. What does Marcellus Wallace look like? What? What country you from? What? What? What ain't no country I ever heard of. They speak English and what? What? English, mother <laughs> Do you speak it? Yes. Then you know what I'm saying. Yes. Describe what Marcellus Wallace looks like. What? Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, mother. Say what one more goddamn time. <laughs> uh, you won the Oscar yes. for Best Original Screenplay. What is the secret to Tarantino dialogue? Um, I just get the characters talking to each other. So it's like me, the writer is writing it, and yeah, I'm kind of controlling it for a while, but the idea is the conversation uh, 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 catches fire amongst the characters, and then they take it and run with it, and then I'm almost like a court reporter, jotting it all down, and, uh, and then usually whatever comes out is what comes out. Now, inside of that, there is a, a, there is a rhythm to it, there is a musicality, to it, there is uh, um, a bit of rhyme that happens uh, uh, between some of the words and some of the phrases. And so, you know, it's not poetry, but it's not completely divorced from poetry. It's not rap, but it's not completely divorced from it. It's not a stand-up comedy act, but it's not completely divorced from that either. I wanna show one other scene for no other reason than it's just so cool mm -hmm. from Pulp Fiction. Great. John Travolta, Uma Thurman. Oh, okay. Here they are. <laughs> they had a high five phone, oh boy, did they let it blast. 700 little records, all rock, rhythm, and jazz. But when the sun went down, the rapid tempo of the music fell. C'est la vie, c'est the old How'd that come about? Everyone knows that I've kind of was uh, bringing John Travolta back from, I think, Look Who's Talking 3 uh, when he did the movie, and it set him up for a whole second act of his career in a really lovely, third act of his career for a really lovely way. But at the time, uh, 
you know, audiences would go see the film. They didn't quite know everything yet, so they're feeling, oh, John Travolta's in this. Oh, I haven't seen him in a while, so he's in the movie, and he's playing a gangster, and it's all going along, and it's funny, and it's this. Then they go to Jack Rabbit Slims, and everything's interesting, and it's a funny dialogue back and forth. This is all interesting. And they go, okay, and now it's time for this twist contest. And uh, um, uh, Uma Thurman goes, okay, right here. And then they go up there, and then he takes off his shoes. And then all of a sudden, all throughout the audience of a packed theater, and this happened for a few weeks when the movie was first opened, you had this little realization like, oh my God, he's gonna dance. He's actually gonna dance. And then John Travolta, <laughs> one of the biggest dance stars of the last 30 years in a movie you did not expect that to happen, goes out there and cuts a rug and brings the house down. So let's jump ahead. 2009, your war, World War II movie, Inglorious Bastards, and here's a scene where Aldo Rain, who's mm -hmm. the head of the American commando unit, the mm -hmm. Bastards, has a surprisingly civil conversation mm -hmm. with SS officer <laughs> Hans Landa. Yes. So you're Aldo the Apache. So you're the Jew hunter. I'm a detective, a damn good detective. Finding people is my specialty, so naturally I worked for the Nazis finding people, and yes, some of them were Jews, but Jew Hunter? <laughs> Just a name that stuck. Well, you do have to admit, it is catchy. <laughs> <laughs> so often in your movies, uh, instead of realism, you go for the way we wish life would be, don't you? Uh -huh. Well, sometimes, sometimes, yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, well, I mean, well, starting with that one particularly, all right, where uh, I, I kind of consider Bastards uh, the, the first part of my uh, 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 rewriting history <laughs> trilogy with uh, that, Django, and then Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Uh, but, you know, the way that ended up coming about is I didn't start the movie with the idea, oh, and this will be the movie that I kill Hitler. That will be the whole thing. And I'll re-engineer everything so that happens. I never really, I never have a, a super clue about exact, I have a clue, take that back, I have a clue, but I never know 100% how the movie is gonna end when I start writing it. So the thing about it is I'm, I'm writing the script and now all of a sudden the, the bastards are in the theater and the whole idea is to blow up the theater and kill, uh, kill Hitler and I go, hey, this is actually kind of working out. <laughs> And I'm, it's like like four in the morning or three in the morning or something like that. And I go, what am I gonna do, what am I gonna do? And then I just had the idea. And so I just took a piece of paper and I wrote, just effing kill him. And then, I, okay, let me put that piece, I, I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea. Let me just put the piece of paper on my bedside table and let me go to bed. Right. When I wake up the next morning, I'll look at it and I'll know more if, if this is a good idea or a bad idea. And when I woke up the next morning, I thought it was a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's your movie. Yeah.